Okay, so the plan today is to see how long it takes us to put the supercharger kit on a CB1000. So it'll be Tim and myself working on this. Uh, Tim will be doing most of the work because I've got some dyno work to do, so I'll have to pop out for two or three hours into the dyno room and do some work on a quad. Then I'll be back to help him. So the first thing to do is take all the panels off, tank off, seat off, and then the troublesome bit is the airbox. Honda must have put the airbox in before they put the engine in. So we have to butcher the airbox so we can get in and remove the screws that are in there. So we've got a hole in the airbox, not in this, this comes off. So we take this off, make a hole in the end of the airbox, undo all the screws, and then we can pull the whole assembly, uh, whole uh, throttle body assembly out. And uh, once that's out, we can pull the airbox out, what's left of it, um, and discard it, because we won't be using that again because we're supercharging. Um, then we'll be putting the throttle bodies onto the plenum chamber before we reassemble into the, onto the bike. And then round here. So the supercharger hangs here. So we're going to take this crash bobbin off and re reinstall it once we get the bracket in. So we've got to take this cover off, this out, uh, put some stronger clutch springs in, put the um, spigot drive off the end of the crank outer here, and then put our bearing assembly on here so we can assemble the supercharger. And the air intake goes behind the exhaust and out the other side with a filter, so we've got plenty of ground clearance, not gonna affect his ground clearance. Uh, belt drive here, nice little belt guard. And the job's done. That's a map sensor. We'll get that off. So it's clear. Solenoid valve. Bend that out of the way. Take that off. Just like that.
Easy as that. Okay, we have the re the, the decapped injectors. Let's reassemble these back into the fuel rail. Just a small amount of rubber grease to help them in. Okay, and back onto the bike. Right, once it's in position and no, nothing's trapped, we can bolt it in. Top rated fuel pump. Needs to go in there. to replace that with that. There you go. Old pump, new pump. Slightly different, but uh, they do fit. So if you can look in there, that's a fuel pressure regulator, a shiny silver bit. We're going to remove that and we're going to compress it to increase the fuel pressure and then put, put it back in. So the next task, after getting this little cap off the top, that little cap there, which is falling out now, that one, after getting that off we've now got to get the silver part out compress it and then put it back in again and this will give us five bar of fuel pressure instead of the three as standard so Tim's just going to get a little pry bar just to lever that out because it's going to be tight in there they always are because they've got no ring in there so we'll show you what we do once we get it out just like that easy as that so if you look really carefully, you can see that there's a spring in there. And that spring holds the diaphragm down in there and gives it the fuel pressure. So if we compress this, we compress the spring more and give it more fuel pressure. So I'll show you how that's done in a few minutes. Okay, so it all fits back in the housing. This centre raised section needs cutting out. Right, that should all go back together now then. Now that's removed. Here's a fuel pressure regulator. So I've got a 15 mm deep socket. Slide that over there. Right, an 8 mm socket, which will sit there. And we put it in the vise. And get it somewhere around there. Right, so that's just nipped up. Get the vernier on it. Set the vernier to zero. And then wind this baby in.
about one millimeter. So we've put pressure on that spring and now we'll probably have somewhere around four and a half, five bar, which should be enough with the big pump and the bigger injectors to give us all the fuel we need once we're up and running. Freaky little number. That's in there. And then get this baby back on there. Click that back in. Job's done. So, got the new fuel pump to go in there. Leave that bit with Tim. Right, we need to put new terminals on because the plug's different on the pump. Uh, so the terminals fit, we have to relieve this area on the plump. Okay, socket is all deburred and cleaned up. Ready for the uh, new wiring to go on. Once we've put the terminals on. Okay, these just need bending so that they fit in the housing. Just like that. Pushes on will all slot together and fit in the hole. It does need a spacer to stop the rubber gasket pushing out under fuel pressure. All right, just have to try and get the uh, connectors on the right way around. So that's the positive. Okay, we're both connectors connected. We've pushed the pump home, space is in position. Now we just put the top back together again. Okay, that's clipped in. Fuel pickup on. Back on. Next comes the plenum. Place the dowsy washer long bolt there it also holds the the bolt in place next we run a bead of the Honda bond around the grooves to seal it Next we carefully position it on the throttle bodies. As soon as we've got a couple started, we know it's lined up. We'll leave that to go off overnight. So next we need to pad out the ECU so that we can put the bracket on and it doesn't rattle around. So we'll stick that on there. Maybe another layer. Now we have air temp sensors, got to go back into the plenum. So 
So when it comes to reflashing the ECU, we have to find the diagnostic port, which is on the right side, hidden behind this panel. So you take the little panel off here, and then you can get to it, and then you pull that out there. He's got uh, his gear position indicator connected to it, so we disconnected that while we reflash. So then we plug in the Woolwich Racing harness, and then we can reflash. So we've got the Woolwich lead, which cable, ECU ends in D01. So we have to find that ECU on the Woolwich software, and then we can open and we can reflash. Then it's Honda. CB1000R, uh, 2008, 17, and this one is a D-01. Don't know whether it's 01-01 or 02, so we'll start with that one. Um, no. So now we're connected. And what we need to do now is open find a BIM file and this one TTS supercharger that's CBR so we don't want that one big pardon and then we have to write to the ECU so before we do that we need to put some voltage to the battery make sure it doesn't go down while it's reflashing that's the worst thing that could happen because that will crash everything okay so as you can see here, it's downloading successfully. So all I've got to do is disconnect, I'm sorry, turn off the ignition to reset the ECU. So that's the base map done. It takes about five minutes for it to flash. As soon as the bike is ready to fire up, uh, we've got something close in there uh, that will stop us fouling plugs. Because obviously we've got more fuel pressure, bigger injectors, and for idle and cruise, you're not going to use any more fuel. So you've got to pull the duty cycle right back on the Woolwich well, Racing software so that you're somewhere in the ballpark for getting an idle straight away. If you're running two and a half times as much fuel at idle, it won't take long to foul the plugs. Those washers, you don't want to lose them because they fit on the end of this shaft. Whew. Right, so now we have got to trim back these two parts here because the spigot drive we've got that goes through this cover will catch there and there. So we've got to dress this out with a die grinder carbide wheel. So we'll get into that in a second. We've got the clutch cover and this dry spigot has got to go go through it. So we have to tidy this up and here so that nothing fouls. It's no big deal, but um, if you don't do it properly, you'll find that that binds up and then your engine won't turn over. So when we finish, you'll see how much we have to remove and uh, then we can put it together. The, oh fuck, where's the rest of it? Okay, so this little baby, we screw in here. Use a bit of silicon sealer to seal it. So that goes all the way in. And then as the, Spigot is going to be sitting down off center because as you've already seen the crank center line is not central to this hole Then the crank comes out the bottom and we have to do that To get it lined up there's a seal that goes in here, but we put that in after we've got the shaft through uh, So we don't damage the seal on assembly. So there you go. That's how this part goes together and then uh, it's held at the drive pulley and bolt all goes through the middle. So we change the clutch springs. It's a standard. 
but that's an uprated. Okay, already fitted four of the springs. Last spring going in. Final torque. And then just paint stick it to make sure it's been done. Job done. Okay, next step. Remove that raised piece and that raised piece. So they don't interfere with the drive spigot. Remove the crank bolt. Reuse thick washer on new longer bolt. Position new drive spigot. And the bolt will just let's take that washer off for now. The bolt just locates it while we put the cover on. Next, we fit the crank sensor back into the case. Get sealant around the wire grommet. Then using Honda Bond or similar, go all the way around the casing. Put them all up to 10 newton meters. Okay, once the crank case is uh, bolted on, make sure you've got uh, plenty of end flow on this spigot so you'll have no clearance issues. Next is we have to remove this lug off the front of the engine. That's for clearance for the air filter, air filter tube into the supercharger. Okay, just take it down a bit lower with the grinder. Right, next we'll get this uh, crash bung out of the way. <laughs> then we've got to fit the all important adapter bracket to there. So, 
So it seals. We need to put a bit of a bit more mastic around there. And wind it in. Binding up. Okay, give it a tighten. So we we'll remove the crash bung and bolt, very rusty. We'll replace it with our longer bolt. Uh, the main supercharged bracket and a spacer. Right, this should space the supercharger up to the right position to mate up with the other mounting bracket. Then this eccentric plate will go on here. Yeah, I think we'll go for that. Right, to reflash this, we have to... Right, next stage is to bolt this plate, the eccentric adjuster there, onto there. So we need to seal it. Little Honda Bond again. Just on that edge there. like that. Then I've got a good fit on the shaft. Once it started and going down squarely, I'll use a drift just in the centre race. There you go. And to make sure we've got a full adjustment on this supercharger bracket, make sure it stays central on the slot through there. Then we can fit six bolts in. Right, I've managed to find a position where I can get six bolts in and also see daylight through there to get the adjuster bolt in and also that plate still floats around so we know it's central. Just centralise it, then just nip the bolts up. Check we can still get the adjuster bolt through so that falls in and out okay and we get full adjustment on the supercharger belt when it's fitted so I'm happy with that so just nip that up making sure it doesn't move it's quite critical that this all stays central Do those up to 10, 10 newton meters. So that plate overcomes the problem of the crank bolt not being central to the inspection hole. Now we've just got to fit the O ring. So we'll put a bit of oil on the lip, the seal. Carefully feed it over the shoulder of the spigot. Then with an appropriate drift. You can tap it home. 
next step is to put the uh, crank pulley on. So see it's got a hex, and a hex on there to drive it, stop it slipping. Uh, we use the original thick washer on a new long bolt. Lock tight 2701. Make sure all the threads are clean on the inside of the uh, crank as well. Now, let's locate the pulley on there. And then tighten the bolt to 65 foot pounds. So we just check for clearance. Make sure the crank goes round. First job, we're going to put the inlet joiner onto the compressor inlet. This is easier access at the moment. Then the length of oil or hose on the ins and the outs of the supercharger so on the back one got a hose clip a straight banjo fits in like so Hose clip into place. Then copper washer each side. And then we'll do the the oil out first. It's just easier to put these on now because they're accessible. Then your oil in uses a longer banjo bolt with a spacer so that we can point the fitting in the right direction just to make it look neater. So same again. And then making sure you've got the banjos in the right place and the washers. Washer each side of each component. Then the spacer just allows the fitting to point in that direction. Just makes a neater installation. Okay, with the pipes connected, we need to put it onto the main bracket. Uh, just getting the orientation right. flat part of the charger always goes at the bottom and it's going to lift something like that on the bike so as long as the holes line up then we'll put the bolts in okay then we move around to the bike Feed the supercharger in, feed the inlet pipe in between the headers and the block. Make sure the oil hoses are in correct position. At this stage it's easier to put the belt on before you put any bolts in. So as long as the belt's in position. Hold the spacer. Yep. Oh, yeah. Hold the spacer. In position, then the new longer bolt goes through, get the thread started. Just nip it up. Right, this is the Rotrex oil tank. 
So I've fitted the oil hose onto the back, which is accessible once it's in position. So it's fitted by removing this rear engine bolt. I have loosened it off. And this M6 bolt underneath the oil filter. So we'll tighten those bolts up and then uh, move on to the intercooler. Okay, and on to the uh, intercooler. It's quite a rusty example, so we'll stick a bit of copper grease on the old bolt. Then, try and get it through the bottom radiator mount and bracket. I think that's got it. Yep. Right, one thing I did have to do to get the intercooler in position was to relocate the horn. It normally lives on a bracket behind the radiator. So using the existing bracket, it can just be bent and bolted to a hole that's already drilled and tapped in the frame and the wiring reach is no problem. Okay, next is to pipe the intercooler up. So, not forgetting to put the clips on. We've got a bit of lube on it to help it on its way. Then, just level everything up, make sure the radiator's uh, integrally in line with the radiator. It wants to go back as far as possible so that you don't get any interference with the front tyre. Square it all up and tighten the clips up. Right, next is the uh, Rotrex oil system. It should be piped up. So I've pre cut all the pipes to length. So we've got the, uh, we'll start at the oil tank. So that's the out of the oil tank. Make sure you get a couple of washers on. So, tighten that up. Okay, so we go from the oil out to the uh, supercharger oil filter, noting the flow direction, so we can uh, tidy that up when we're happy with all the lengths and the routing. So we go from the filter to the oil in of the supercharger, which is on the front edge, she actually says, in stamped on it and then we come from the oil out which lives on the back of the supercharger just there so that wants to go to the oil cooler so keeping the pipes away from the exhaust let's come around the outside of the uh, compressor outlet then that will go over to the oil cooler. Just nip that up for now. Then the oil out of the oil cooler. Again, getting copper washers. And again, that can be left only finger tight that one for now because it has to miss the spacer. So a bit of copper grease and then bolt it up using the spacer to the bottom of the intercooler.
and the same this side. Right, they can be fully tightened now. Right, once we're happy with the routing of the uh, oil lines, we can uh, make sure everything's tight. Okay. Then it's just a matter of uh, using cable ties, tidy, tidy it all up and secure everything into place. That was the, uh, the air intake for the supercharger. So, normally mounts between the uh, crash bung and the engine plate. But on this, it sees solid. So uh, rather than snap the bolt off or break the cast in, we're gonna mount it on this uh, bolt here. So, feed it into the silicon hose that we fitted to the supercharger at the beginning not forgetting that the uh, to put a jubilee clip on so we need to put a spacer the spacer that's going to stop in there like so then a 10 mil longer bolt fine thread and then the uh, interesting bit will be getting the nut on the back. Like, there's the washer. There's the nut. So before I tighten that up, I will uh, just put a filter on it just to make sure it's in the right place. So the filter will live there, right by the crash burn. In, orientate it so it's nice and square before we do that up but uh, that looks fine I should tighten all that up in that position Jubilee clip is a bit tricky to get to but uh, it is accessible from underneath with a couple of uh, pointy sticks you can uh, get that in the right place right next we put the uh, boost pipe in connecting the intercooler to the plenum so this bike has actually got a uh, silicon hose set on it so um, it's not quite as much room there as it would be with the honda pipes but i'm sure we can live with that so again a bit of lube Right, make sure that the intercooler is still level because it's relying on the pipes, the boost pipes both sides to help stabilise it. Okay, looks fine. We'll tighten that up in a minute. So there's the uh, blow-off valve to go on next. So that lives on that stub there. We'll live in that position then we need to uh, get a vacuum line to it to activate it when under closed throttle so this piece of vac hose with a t-piece will go from that tail and then we should just tee into the the vac lines from the throttle bodies Right, now the pipes are all secure. Uh, dump valve's in position. Vacuum pipe is secured. We tee into the vacuum lines on the throttle bodies. Uh, a number four vacuum pipe that normally goes to the vacuum chamber. We take, bring that across and join it into the other three cylinders just to uh, give a more even pulse on the vacuum line. Uh, I'll leave this line open at the moment. This will be connected to a boost gauge for mapping purposes. Next, we will be putting a voltage cap into the wiring on the uh, map sensor.
this will stop the ECU seeing an over voltage. Okay, we need to fit the voltage clamp. This will live, this needs to be accessible. So we well, took it down here somewhere under the seat. So just run the wires forward to the map sensor. It's only four wires, very simple to wire up. So you've got a, where are we? You've got a black wire, which goes into the earth wire, which is green and orange, according to the Honda manual. And it's the one on the right hand side, looking at the rear of the plug with the clip on top. Uh, red wire from the split second voltage cap goes to the left hand wire. These are just teed in, these are these earth and the, uh, that's the five, five volt reference. So that goes into the yellow and red wire. Now the blue wire and the blue and white wire, they have to go into, what you do is you cut the middle wire, which is the signal wire. So the solid blue wire goes into the plug, which is light green and yellow. And the blue and white wire coming from the voltage clamp goes to the other wire that you've just cut. So that will go off to the ECU. So it's just a matter of tidying the wiring up, clipping the wire to the harness, uh, securing the split second. It has got a cover on the back that will need to come off to adjust the... Uh... Right, I have uh, changed the plugs on this already. We change them to uh, CR9Es and gap them to 20 thou. So there's four of those gone in. Uh, I've also deleted the pair valve. Now all I've done, I, I took the pair valve out and I just put a, a slug of aluminium at each pipe. Put the pair valve back in. You have to leave it connected electronically so that it doesn't throw up a fault code and turn the light on. Uh, also the IC, IDC valve as well. That is still plugged in, but tucked away and cable tied up out the way, out of harm's way. There again, we leave that uh, plugged in electronically to uh, stop any lights appearing on the dash. And uh, I think it's time to put some oil in and bleed the uh, supercharge system. Right. Okay, next is to uh, stick some of this expensive Rotrex oil in. Right, there is a bleed uh, a, uh, level hole on this tank, so uh, what we'll do, we'll fill it up to the level. There is three chambers on that tank to stop surge and the braking and acceleration. Okay, let's see we get in there. Ooh, there you go. Right, what we'll do with that. Right, to actually uh, prime the system, what I tend to do is, this is the return, this is the oil out of the supercharger. So what I do is block that off with a clamp. Then just attach a tube to there and then just blow like mad until the uh, oil as it will fill up the uh, filter and then go up to the oil in. Okay with the uh, pipe attached we blow, crack this off and then uh, hopefully oil will come out. So that's good enough for priming. Once you start up, it will pump the oil into the oil cooler and then back to the tank. So it will need topping up. 
once the engine's running and that's uh, the best way to uh, well, that's the only way to uh, check the oil level as well so with the engine running take the plug out and then just top it up with the engine running until oil comes out of the level plug and then job done there is just a, a breather hose that will go goes on here and then that will just go up and loop somewhere under the seat unit uh, so the final thing is we'll just check the tightness of the belt and the bolts holding the supercharger on not forgetting to take the clamp off otherwise that won't do the supercharger any good and uh, we'll be good to uh, get it round to the dyno once the petrol tank's on okay installation's all finished so running from front to back we have uh, the intercooler supercharger oil cooler supercharger itself the uh, main bracket the eccentric adjustable bracket to get the uh, crank spigot in the center uh, belt has been tightened and adjusted it will need a, another adjustment once it's bedded in uh, we have the oil reservoir for the supercharger uh, the, uh, fuel, the uh, oil filter for the supercharger <laughs> then you've got the uh, plenum new uh, the ECU bracket there uh, the injectors have been decapped uh, it's got a map new map in it so it's ready to run uh, otherwise it'll be a bit rich because it's got the fuel pump as well operating fuel pump uh, and they tend to uh, choke up quite easily with too much fuel um, got a new engine breather so we ditched the original pipe that goes into the original airbox uh, the pair valve has been deleted the uh, IDC has been deleted repiped up the uh, vacuum system uh, dump valves all connected uh, and we've got the connecting boost pipe that goes down to the intercooler and the new air filter and inlet pipe into the supercharger uh, so the um, voltage clamp will need adjusting when we've got the bike running uh, and the next step is to get it round onto the dyno and uh, do a final bit of mapping and see what it's doing okay right um, now it's all complete we're gonna just fire it up so it's got a fresh map in it so uh, fueling should be somewhere near so we'll run it for a bit and then uh, give the oil a chance to circulate through the oil cooler and then we'll take the bung out and then top the oil up to the level plug uh, get it round to the dyno and see what we can do with it Okay, so to stop the engine management light coming on and the lights coming on because the manifold pressure sensor is seeing more than 8 psi of boost. So we've got a split second voltage clamp. Now this clamp is adjustable and we bring the voltage that the ECU sees down to below 4.7 volts. At the moment she's a little bit high so I'm going to make an adjustment. So the voltage clamp at the top end is this one. And by turning it in, I believe we are going to lower the voltage. So we'll just do that a couple of turns, see where we are. That's it, we'll keep playing until we get the engine management light to stay out. Okay, so got another four or five minutes of reflash. We're running too rich at the top end still, too lean at the bottom end. So we're making some changes. We're already at 210 brake. 
at 10,500 RPM. Um, so she's looking sweet. Spend another three or four hours just fine tuning and um, give it back to Tim to box it up ready for the customer. Okay, so we're getting there, all the top end horsepower's where it's going to be, which is around 223 horsepower. Stock with the Kropovich exhaust was 116. Torque's gone up from 68 foot pound to 116 foot pound. Uh, we use SAE correction factors, which are relatively pessimistic. Uh, some of the Europeans used DIN, which will give it more horsepower, about 229 instead of uh, whatever it was, 2, 223, and yeah, EC. All these different authorities can't make up their mind what is correct. And we pull a, put a curved ball into that because we're not dealing with atmospheric pressure. We're actually putting compressed air into the engine and compressed air is hotter than the atmosphere around us by a lot. Then the intercooler cools it down. So the air going into the engine is probably running at somewhere around 30 to 40 degrees, which is pretty hot. Um, so correction factors don't work very well with forced induction motors. Um, so if we go to no correction factor, look at that. It's actually making 231 horsepower on the day and 120 foot pound of, of torque. But it's a comparator. Super, um, Dyno is a comparator and we're comparing 116 to 225 or whatever. It's still an enormous gain. And we've got a little bit of work to do at the bottom end. You can see here, we're extremely lean if we give it full throttle at 2,000, 2,500 RPM. So you can see it's actually lost horsepower over stock because it's too lean. So we're gonna throw some more fuel in at the bottom end and we'll pick that up. And you can see the rest of it is running really well. So we're running air fuel ratio down about 13 to one and up until about 7,000 revs. Not a lot of boost on that. You know, we're only running five or six pound of boost. And then we bring it down below 12 to 12 and a half to one, around 12 to one, right to the top end. And we're limiting it at uh, about 10,400 RPM. I think we'll talk, the, talk to the customer and ask him uh, if we'd like us to gear it up, I think we could go up a couple of teeth on the engine sprocket, maybe down two on the back, keep the chain the same length, um, gear it up nicely, and then he can utilize this power. He can cruise at lower revs, be more economic than stock. And then when he wants to go for it, he's still got loads and loads of grunt. Um, I think that'd be the way to go. So we'll talk to him in the next few days and probably order some sprockets up to make use of all this extra power. Good job, good job.